Hi there, welcome back. As a behind the scenes video, today in DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to show you how I debug and correct an issue found in the radial wipe effect template. If you want to know how this effect was initially created in DaVinci Resolve, you can click the video link up here or through the link in the description below. First, let's take a look at the issue. Add a simple background clip to the timeline, change the color to ocean blue. It's my favorite color. Apply an essential mask effect to the background. Go to the effects tab and change the mask type to ellipse. Add the radial wipe effect to the clip. Expand the radial wipe settings in the inspector. Check the clockwise option. It's working as expected until we check the close border option. This is not right. When we enable the close border option, we expect the border to surround the solid blue sector. When the wipe angle is set to zero, we should be seeing nothing instead of this closed circle. If we turn off the clockwise option, everything works. Now we know which part is wrong, let's open the composition in the Fusion page. Double click the node to expand the group so that we can see the node tree of the effect. The border color and border width are used to control the border styles, so they should not be the cause of the issue. It leaves only the first three nodes to check. The bitmap node is mainly used to convert the media input to a mask, which is a circle in this case, and connect to the ellipse node as the effect mask input to limit the mask output. We can drag the bitmap node to the left viewer to see its output. This is used to support the concept of close border. If we disconnect the bitmap and bring the ellipse node to the viewer, we see the white area is spreading to fill the entire screen, excluding the wiping area. If we add back the bitmap connection, the mask selection is limited by the media input. But this selection is wrong. We set the start angle to zero and 60 the wipe angle. The white selection should be at the same spot as the blue sector, as we see on the right side viewer. Make sure the ellipse node is selected, go to the inspector. The paint mode is modified by a simple expression. When close border is on, the mode is set to multiply, which limits the mask by the media input bitmap mask. Otherwise, the paint mode will be set to none, which is the copy mode. It basically discards the input mask and uses only the new mask from the current node. This expression is fine, but we need the result selection to be the opposite. Enable the invert option, and we have mask selection inverted, which is correct. But the final result is wrong, as we can see on the right side viewer. Select the Mat Control node, which controls the final output. The Ellipse node is connected as the garbage mat input and defines the area to be made transparent, which is excluded from the output. We can bring the Mat Control into the right viewer for comparison. In the inspector, we see there is an expression for the Garbage Invert option. It's used to invert the mask when it's checked. In our case here, we don't need this anymore because the selection mask is fully controlled by the ellipse node. We can remove the expression and always check the option. Because the part we want to remove is the opposite of the selection mask from the ellipse node. Bring the media out to the viewer. Select the radial wipe group node. It's working in clockwise mode now. But when it's counterclockwise, the wipe effect no longer works. When the wipe angle is set to zero, the result is showing the full circle with the border, which is the opposite of what we expect. Because we removed the conditional expression from the garbage invert parameter. But we still need a similar condition based on the wiping direction to make the selection in the ellipse node. Select the ellipse node and go to the inspector. Right-click the Invert parameter, choose Expression to enable the simple expression input. 
Drag a whip from the add button to the clockwise option at the bottom. This links the invert parameter to the clockwise option. Changing the wipe direction automatically sets the invert parameter. Now, it's working for both wipe directions. OK, we have fixed the issue in the fusion composition for the effect. But how do we update the existing template with the fix? Luckily, we don't have to recreate a new macro from scratch and repeat the steps to select and organize parameters for the macro template. Collapse the group node in the node editor. Select the group node. Go to the inspector and reset the parameters with default values used by the template. Make a copy of the group. Open the effects panel. Expand the templates folders until we see the radial wipe effect. Right click and select show folder. This will take us to the template folder in Mac Finder or Windows File Explorer. Duplicate a copy of the radial wipe effect setting file, rename it to essential radial wipe new. Open the new file in a text editor. Select all contents and delete. Paste the content we just copied from the Fusion page. Save the file. Go back to DaVinci Resolve and switch to the edit page. Delete the radial wipe effect from the clip. If you don't see the new template in the effects panel, restart DaVinci Resolve. Apply the new template to the clip. Go to the effects tab in the inspector. Expand the new radial wipe effect settings. All the parameters are still available and organized the same way as before. Turn on the clockwise option, enable close border. It works now. Open it in the Fusion page, expand the group. Select the ellipse node, and we can see the expressions added to the invert parameter. And in the Mat Control node, the expression for garbage invert option is now removed. Alright, that's all for today. I also uploaded a new version of the radial wipe effect with this fix. You can download it with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.